Welcome to Tutorial. Subscribe, like, and hit the bell icon to never miss another one of our amazing videos. Ever wondered why proposing feels like asking your boss for a raise? Because it's probably the only time you're sweating for a yes that doesn't involve money. Now the grand proposal, much like a magic trick, lies in the three Ps. Precision, preparation, and perspiration, I guess? First things first, precision. You've got to find a ring that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Remember, it's not the price tag, but the love that counts. Next, preparation. Pick the perfect moment to pop the question. A moment that's so them they can't help but say yes. Finally, perspiration. Practice that speech until it sounds less like a nervous wreck and more like a Shakespearean sonnet. Sweat the small stuff and your grand proposal will be as smooth as butter. And remember, if they say no, at least you've saved yourself from a lifetime of picking your clothes off the floor. Once you've survived the proposal, welcome to the world of wedding planning, where your dreams of a small, intimate ceremony are crushed by your partner's vision of a royal wedding. Now let's dive into the labyrinth of wedding planning. It starts innocuously enough with setting a date. You'd think that's easy, right? But imagine trying to pick a date that doesn't clash with the season finale of your favorite sports event or your best friend's birthday bash. It's like playing a game of chess where every move needs to be calculated and every consequence anticipated. Next on our adventure is the quest for the perfect venue. This is not just about finding a place that aligns with your aesthetic preferences. Oh no, it's about navigating the treacherous waters of budgeting where you might find yourself considering taking a second mortgage just to afford that castle venue your partner is adamant about. It's a dance between practicality and dreams where sometimes dreams tend to lead the waltz. But wait, there's more. You now have to create a guest list. It's like solving a jigsaw puzzle where you're trying to fit in your family, friends, colleagues, and yes, your partner's third cousin twice removed who you've never met. Balancing everyone's expectations while ensuring that you don't invite an army is a challenge equivalent to walking a tightrope. And let's not forget the delightful task of choosing the menu. It's like a culinary expedition where you have to cater to Uncle Bob's gluten intolerance, Aunt Sarah's vegan diet, and your best man's inexplicable aversion to anything green. In the midst of all this, you'll find yourself submerged in a sea of flower arrangements, cake tastings, and dress fittings. Each decision feels like a Herculean task, and every choice seems to have a domino effect on the rest of the plan. And when you're knee-deep in flower arrangements and cake tastings, just remember, this is the easy part. After all, planning a wedding is not just about organizing a grand event, it's about crafting a day that celebrates your love story. And that, dear friends, is the real challenge. So you've made it to the big day. You're dressed to the nines, your pockets are empty, and you're about to promise to love someone even when they snore like a freight train. Yes, this is the day you've been waiting for or losing sleep over, depending on how you look at it. The morning is a blur of hairspray, cufflinks, and a breakfast you can't eat because, who knew, nerves do kill your appetite. Then comes the ceremony where you try not to trip over your own feet and hope to high heaven you remember the vows you wrote at two in the morning and just when you thought you could breathe, there's the first dance. Oh, the first dance where you shuffle around like a penguin with two left feet, praying you don't step on your partner's toes. But at the end of the day, as you're running away from a crowd of people throwing rice at you, remember, you've just signed up for a lifetime of this madness. Congratulations, you've survived the wedding. Now comes the honeymoon phase, where you realize that for better or worse also includes dirty socks and snoring. Ah, the sweet scent of reality. You thought you'd be spending your days basking in the glow of marital bliss. But instead, you're arguing over whose turn it is to do the dishes. Welcome to the honeymoon phase. The time when you discover that your spouse's charming little quirks, like leaving wet towels on the bed, aren't so charming after all. But fear not. This is also the time when you learn the art of compromise. Suddenly watching three hours of a sports game you couldn't care less about doesn't seem so bad if it means they'll watch your favorite reality show with you later. The honeymoon phase is all about navigating this new shared life together, the good, the bad, and the laundry. But hey, at least now you've got someone to kill the spiders and laugh at your terrible jokes. And isn't that what marriage is all about? 